A false teaching that was creeping into the church in Galatia was the idea that a person's work or keeping of the law would somehow contribute to their salvation or to bring them into a right relationship with God. Paul calls these people Judaizers or the circumcision party. These were people who were coming into the church in Galatia and they were telling them that they couldn't be Christians, these Gentiles, unless they followed all the ceremonial laws of the Old Testament. Now, interestingly, Paul had already run into people like this on his missionary journeys and brought the issue to the Apostolic Council, and it was already settled. People do not need to keep all of these ceremonial laws in order to become Christians. In the book of Acts, we read about Peter and how he was the one who brought the gospel to the Gentiles. And yet, Peter himself was influenced by this circumcision party. And here's what's really interesting. Paul decides to confront Peter, and not privately, but publicly and to his face. Was it really necessary for Paul to confront Peter in this way? So publicly? I mean, after all, that probably brought great shame upon Peter. He was probably really embarrassed. Well, actually... Paul needed to confront Peter, and he needed to confront him publicly because people needed to know that this sort of theology is dangerous. To think that somehow we contribute to our salvation is to nullify the work of Christ. This is what Paul writes in his epistle to the Galatians. I do not nullify the grace of God, for if righteousness were through the law, then Christ died for no purpose. Christ's sacrifice does it all for us. See, this is important for us to understand. It's not as if we're just thanking Jesus for doing something for us that we could have done for ourselves. Like if you go to the the mechanic and you get your oil changed on your car and you say, hey, thanks for changing my oil. And the mechanic says, no problem, that'll be $79.85. But instead you're thinking, but I could have done this at home, but it's convenient that you did it for me. It's not the same thing. Jesus does something for us that we cannot do for ourselves. And if we begin to think that there's something I can contribute to my salvation, then all of a sudden we're saying, what Jesus did for me doesn't really matter. If I work hard enough, I could do it myself. Or if I do enough things in keeping with the law, I could accomplish salvation for myself. And Paul is saying, that's really dangerous. You cannot focus on your good works in this way. But that's not to say that good works are not important in the Christian life, because they certainly are. After all, in James chapter 2, he says that faith without works is dead. And in Romans chapter 12, Paul says, Let love be genuine. Abhor what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with brotherly affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. You see, good works are important in the Christian life, but they flow from the gospel, not from the law. They flow from what Christ has done for us. They flow from the fact that Christ has set us free from our obligation of keeping the law, and we see God's law as good, and we want to love and serve our neighbor, and we use that law as a guide in order to tell us how to do that, not because we have to, but because we want to. Paul says in Galatians chapter 2, we know that a person is not justified by works of the law, but through faith in Jesus Christ, because by works of the law, no one will be justified. And that means our declaration of not guilty that comes to us from God the Father is for the sake of Christ and not for the sake of anything that we have done. That should be a motivation for us to serve and love our neighbor as Christ serves and loves us.